for those of you who are interested in this, okay, what we're doing right now is we're going to do a follow up to a video that we put out uh, about 10 days ago. Okay. And the video is uh, sort of the conversation came up of exponential functions. And what we ended up doing was uh, uh, during a math stream. So what we ended up doing was uh, basically uh, graphing what we knew of the coronavirus as an exponential function. Right, and we loaded this uh, video up on January twenty eighth, two thousand, uh, two, uh, two thousand and twenty. Right, and we called the exponential growth of the Wuhan coronavirus graphing graphing the rate of uh, viral infections. Right, and we were estimating, we were assuming that the virus was going to be doubling every thirty hours, and to a certain degree, it was initially. But now it seems to have tapered off a little bit, right? So we have enough data for basically a couple of extra weeks, uh, 14 extra days of uh, things we can look at, analyze. So that's what we're going to do uh, right now, sort of a follow up on this and take a look at the graphs and just to see how things look. OK, so let me bring out the table. I'm going to kill the display. In the background okay the outcoming data currently is not reliable though worth noting it is worth noting and I will be mentioning this stuff once we go through this right this is we're at the beginning stages of what's taking place right the data that you see here in the table is I compiled it from a website from John Hopkins that's providing the data. And if, you know, after we take a look at this graph, I'll link up the tables and the links will be available in the description of this video. Let me, for those of you watching live, let me give you the link to the site that I'm using. And they just released a couple of hours ago, they just released some additional data. Okay. And uh, I didn't have enough time to load it up. Uh, to this table and to the graphs, right? So we're looking at the data available from this website, okay? From January 19, uh, January 19th, 2020 to February 4th, 2020, right? A month and plus, um, actually not even a month, like how many days is that? Like a couple of weeks or so, right? Two or three weeks, two and a half weeks, let's say. So we're going to take a look at that data and we're going to graph every single one of these columns, right? The first one we're going to look at is the rate of infections or how many people are infected in mainland China and then outside of China. And then we're going to take a look at the percent growth per day in China, because I think that's really important. And the percent growth per day outside of China. We're going to take a look at the death rate, the death totals and the recovered totals. And then we're going to look at the death ratio and the recovery ratio and all the data, raw data is available here, right? I had to do a little bit of calculation in each columns. Um, and if you guys want, we can go over the calculations. They're, they're quite simple, actually. It's just percentages and stuff, right? So not a big deal. Um, but what I'd like to do is take a look at the take a look at the data, take a look at the graphs, because that's really uh, what's extremely important. Uh, is for us to get a visual of what's going on, right? So let me take down the table and we'll come back to the table if anyone has any questions or whatnot. Here's the first graph. This is the total confirmed cases. There's one case right now off the southwest coast of Africa, Oof, off at the Atlantic. Yeah, if it gets into Africa and grows into, into India, Right now, they say only three cases in India, but I'm guessing it's probably more. If it gets into Africa, um, it might grow much faster. So we're going to keep this data in mind, these visuals, right? So this is the total confirmed cases that we're getting from the centralized Chinese government that what we have right now. It's already spreading in India. It's already spreading in India. I'm pretty sure it is too, right? So three is, my guess is an underestimate, right? But we're going to go with the official numbers. 
because no matter what if this is still exponential growth within two weeks it'll be obvious where we're at with this right even within a week it's going to be pretty obvious right we can take a look at the you know estimate the rate of growth how you know what the doubling period is and stuff but i didn't get a chance to do it uh, before the stream started they said there's a concern at risk of infection of 5,000 plus people suru and suru is from india so there's some uh, news coming out of there south america of the south america is the only unaffected continent save for Ant antarctica yeah i hope it doesn't go into south america either um, we'll see right there are positive um, things we're going to look at in the data right this is the rate of infection in mainland china and as of february 4th confirmed it was around twenty-seven thousand, right based on the table that we have right if you look at the table down at the bottom the mainland confirmed cases was twenty seven thousand four hundred approximately anyway and that's january from january 19th of being 278 right so it's been spreading pretty fast okay so the table uh, the graph here one thing that looks more positive is it's not doing the exponential kick up it's turning into more of a linear hopefully it doesn't s right exponentials when they grow up stuff like this sometimes it burns out and it doesn't s and then later on it disappears right so this is what we see this is the what the data looks like coming out of mainland china okay for the last how many days one 17 days right two and a half weeks right so day one is january 19th and day 17th is february 4th 2020 okay here is what the graph looks like for outside of china including hong kong so this looks more positive because it's looking linear but again there isn't enough data for us to really get a feel for what's going on because in the beginning stages of this virus in china the graph also was sort of linear until we started getting more confirmed cases because it was a 14 day uh, what do you call it where there is no sign of infection right sars did the tapering out uh, you just described eventually completely leveled off eventually completely leveled off which is what we're hoping for right however it did so at a rate of infection death uh, than c corona is currently at yeah and uh, sars it wasn't uh asystematic right so there's a 14 day incubation period where no one's showing any signs with sars people start showing signs right away so there was more care being taken to a certain degree right and we're not 100 sure how this is being spread or whatnot uh the middle east uh, respiratory syndrome mers also did the same if i recall correctly i believe so i believe so so that's what we're hoping for for this right and this is positive we're graphing outside of china including hong kong and the graph looks like this right now confirmed cases now again early stages right so you really don't know what's going on there is enough data available for us right uh, but not bad and considering the rate of infection in china the confirmed numbers aren't doing this they're doing they're coming more towards a linear hopefully this is a sign of what china's infection rate is going to look like right and then taper off so this is the graph for outside of china infection now another column that we ended up graphing let me bring this up again uh, I wanted to graph to see how much the infection was growing per day, right? And the next two graphs that we're going to take a look at are percent growth per day in China and percent growth per day outside of China, including Hong Kong. Okay. So there's also some reports of possibly some uh, people having recovered from coronavirus can still spread it, really like to survive but they are still carriers of the disease for a while after people who recovered and they send send home and they still infected family members or it could be the uh, incubation period the 
asystematic. If they were with the family 14 days before, right, uh, maybe they spread it then and then they got sick. But the recovery rate is pretty slow on this. So if you include 14 days here at the last day, they infected someone and they have a 14 day period. I'm assuming people are not recovering within 14 days. And we're going to take a look at the gr uh, recovery graph as well. And that looks more positive, right? Asymptomatic, under the radar stuff, under the radar stuff, right? So the next two graphs we're going to take a look at is percent growth per day in China and percent growth per day outside of China. Okay. So let me take the table down again. They have viral uh, particles in their bodies, but that does not mean they are contagious. Yeah. And from what I understand, this virus is mutating rapidly, right? So hopefully it mutates itself out of existence, right? Hi, Newt. How are you doing? It's over if this comes to New York City. New York City? Oh, I don't know. Uh, sleepy waves. Uh, the biggest concern for me is India and Africa and South America, right? And Bangladesh and areas where they can't contain it, right? Where it can't be quarantined, where there is enough facilities or drugs to treat people. So right now, let's look at the rate of growth per day right percent growth per day in china this is what the graph looks like is there really no cure for we don't know this is brand new right sorry i actually don't know much about it sleepy waves we'll take a look at it i have a couple of um, uh, videos lined up from um, world health organization to watch so you get a feel for what it is i just assumed i thought it was a good idea to go through the data first okay that way everyone has a visual of what it is they're talking about okay there are reportedly things which can help fight recover from it but there's no definitive cure yet that i am aware of yeah i don't think there is yet and that's what the world health organization they put out a video today talking about it right so taking a look at this graph this is percent growth per day in china right as you can tell in any early stages of anything where you're collecting data the beginning stages it's all over the place right so right now you can see at the beginning week 10 days we're all over the place we're going percent growth goes from less than 20 percent to 70 percent to less than 20 40 something percent up to 120 percent so flip 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 high frequency right large range in the data and then it's narrowing down to a level so right now it seems to be narrowing down to a 20 percent growth per day right now right from what happened with sars and mers it's unlikely to develop a vaccine for any time soon and hopefully nature takes care of it right they managed to uh, bred it uh, breed it in a lab here in austin which is the first major step to test cures which is a great start which is a great start awesome josie thanks for the info i was reading the chinese government is trying to push traditional remedies to treat it possibly dragon why not it came from nature so there might be a natural cure for it right hello spider-man how are you doing i love spider-man so this is the rate of growth per day in china right and if we take a look at the table let me bring up the table again Oop. if we look at one two three four the fifth column right if you look towards the end we're seeing the rate of growth per day stabilizing around 20 percent between 15 to 20 percent i want i'm going to keep an eye on that just to see hopefully it comes down right there are articles which say uh, vaccination development will need a few months. Yeah, it's for one understand vaccination is supposed to take a long time unless someone already has a vaccine, right? So this is the rate of growth per day in China. And let's take a look, look at the graph for the rate of growth per day outside of China, which is this. And again, high frequency, high, um, uh, sorry, 
high range just oscillating right big margin of error at the beginning and it's stabilizing around 10 percent right which again is better than 80 percent at the peak right the good news i guess is that 80 percent of the fatalities are people over 60 and younger kids as well right or people who are already immune compromised if they're already sick well first they ha have to develop it which takes time then approve it do human trials which takes time then produce and distribute which takes time and if this thing's kicking into high gear i'm assuming the speed for go human trials the people that are sick will be the experiments i guess i'm not sure but if they're going to go through all the hoops in the appropriate time frame it would take a year or more right or longer longer way longer if there's human trials i'm guessing i used to follow some uh, pharma stocks so i know how long it takes to bring things to trial to first phase anyway and it's a long time how long time do we uh how long time do we think like a year uh from my understanding if it has to go through the hoops it's going to be longer right if they fast track things possibly within a few months it all depends how fast things are growing right the face masks are becoming a bit of a fashion statement here yeah there's people wearing in my area too it really develops just how bad it could get but uh depends on how bad it could get but expecting yeah like six months to a year if it's really really bad they could expedite it in some cases for sure there's an article on the origins and uh, family tree of the virus here uh dvd you would have to post this on uh, our discord page no links in chat okay new version of corona is made by united states of america and they bio attack china and china kept faxing it possibly there's lots of theories out there we don't know right now the only thing we're caring about right now is the data the official reports right and we're looking at the official reports because we're at the beginning stages of things right and they're releasing them and people are seeing the effects and both inside of china and outside of china so even if this data is wrong or suppressed we'll find out what's going on in 10 days to two weeks anyway right which we might be doing a follow-up video within a month we're going to know what's going on because the data is going to tell us everything we need to know almost anyway nah bro it was made by china to call their we don't know right they already have cigarettes for that though evening chicho zare evening how are you doing okay so that's the rate of growth per day outside of china right here is what the graph looks like for the death toll so far right this is total death toll inside and outside of china outside there isn't that many right so this this doesn't look good the death toll within one two three four five six days has gone from 200 plus people to 500 plus people that's doubling so it's the death toll so far doubling every six days right so we can take a look at the table again i'll show you what graph we're looking at and we're going to hear some banging noises and stuff there's people moving into this complex so uh unfortunately our timing sort of sucks on doing this but this is the death toll we're in column i should have numbered these column but one two three four five six seven if you look at the seventh column this is what we're looking at right now right so within one two three four five days right the death toll has more than doubled okay the good news is the recovery if you look at the table is at a steeper incline right so it's gone from 187 to almost 10 times well not 10 times but seven times right six six seven times more have recovered within that period right tell them to stop banging and making noises in the evening <laughs> no it's okay sleepy waves i let people do live their lives man you know people are moving in they're excited right they're happy to be moving into a place and we're happy to have new people around right so let them move in do their thing right you can handle the noise as alan watts would say just think of, think about it as walking in the in the forest and birds are chirping or tree branches are falling 
just noise in the background, right? It's all good. It's all good. How are they treating the virus anyway? I, I don't know. I think they're just possibly antibiotics. What's the treatment for pneumonia? You give them oxygen, you give them antibiotics, huge doses of vitamin C and vitamin D. Um, you give them maybe asthma inhaler stuff. I don't know what that stuff is called. I don't know what the treatment for asthma is, right? So this is the graph for the death toll growing, right? Here's the graph for the recovery and the recovery looks good so that's a huge positive this 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 one is going exponential hardcore right if the death toll is supposed to be two percent which is the next graph we're going to look at right so from the data official reports that we have the death rate percent is two percent right the death ratio is two percent right so if two percent mortality rate then it should be 98 percent recovery right or let's say 90 percent recovery to full health and eight percent might have some long-term side effects right so this graph looks good with the recovery rate right and here's the the death rate right for what we know for the last one two three four five six and this is day 17 is february 4th 2020 right so the death rate looks like it's stabilizing around two percent according to official chinese or actually official numbers because there's only one death outside of china so far so most of the deaths out of the 500 right now it's more it's more six 600 plus but let's say 500 to where we've taken the data 500 plus um you know 500 plus minus one has been in china so the death rate right now is around two percent okay and the recovery rate is growing so the recovery rate because there's a 14-day uh, asystematic that people were and it takes a while for people to recover we haven't been getting any data on the recovery or it's been really slow coming and it's starting to accelerate now right so we're seeing the exponential kick up as well in the recovery so that's a positive sign as well right the percent recovered so at the beginning we we're less than two percent now we're peaking above four percent i'm hoping that within a week we'll be well above 20 to 30 to 40 percent recovery rate right which would be fantastic so the way they treat it is antiviral and antibiotic some assistive drugs and putting them on oxygen full-time so it's oxygen full-time that's huge resources right there right huge resources if this thing spreads into countries that can't afford those resources or they don't have the medical system established to build two temporary hospitals within 10 days and and whatnot the machine kicking into gear then the death rate is going to increase without a doubt right what good teacher plutorio how are you doing welcome to another live stream and again this was our table right this is the data we just took a look at so should we flip through all the graphs going backwards and then i'm gonna show you guys uh the world health organization i think we should watch the video there's questions we can have regarding the video the world health organization they did a news briefing today on february 6 2020 and there were questions asked they they sort of side stepped the answers they shared some information which is we can take a look at and discuss further okay but just to recap this is the table we've got we've graphed so far so this is the data we're about to take a look at okay the doctor who warned the authorities um, in December died today. Yeah, I have that linked actually bookmark right now on an article that we might get to, right? So uh, there's things going on. We don't know. There's a lot of theories flying around. As far as I'm concerned, the best thing we can do is keep calm heads, right? Be informed, be aware, wash hands and be clean in your living space and outside where you are and be aware right and we look at the data right the data says it all 
mathematics is where it's at right that is information that you can grind your teeth in right get a hold of and analyze and take a look at okay so this is the table that we're about to look at the graphs for and then what we're going to do is just we're going to take a look at some links and the first thing we're going to do is take a look at a short four and a half minute video that the world health organization put out explaining what the coronavirus virus is and then we're going to take a look at a i think it's a half half an hour news briefing i watched today that with world health organization answering questions right we also make at least some minor preparations make some minor preparations go get yourself some supplies that you need at home right food toilet paper vitamin c vitamin d zinc soap whatever you need right spread awareness for sure coronavirus mancas i'm not sure if you said that already sorry yeah spread awareness the best thing we could do is look at the data and see what's going on isn't this like sars 2.0 i think it's more severe than sars pluto uh pluto pluto reno pluto reno i think it's more serious than sars personally okay i wasn't very much concerned about sars at the time i didn't spend the time to graph the data i'm spending the time to graph the data right and share it with you guys i think it's important Pluto Reno Pluto Reno I figured it out it took me a little bit of time so let's take a look at the graphs in reverse order so we're going to look at the graph that is on the this side the recovery ratio first and then we're going to make our way down to the infections in China ha, I was living in Southeast Asia doing SARS and no one really cared yeah yeah it wasn't a big deal this is this one is a big deal Chisho should be fine because elderberry is uh, near enough the best natural flu killer is it i have some elderberry liqueur that i might start drinking a little bit increase increase looks uh, increase looks linear does this mean infection rate is less than uh one percent i'm assuming normal flu is no infection rate is uh, is higher than flu which means one person infects 1.3 person no i think the infection rate for uh, coronavirus is between two to three percent as far as we know right um, I didn't grab well we don't know uh, what the um, actually sorry the the death rate is um, around two percent the R naught value the rate of spreading is anywhere between two to three percent right I think it's the R naught value that you're um, talking about Frank yeah so let's take a look at this stuff the first graph is the recovery ratio so as data is becoming available we're seeing that the recovery rate is increasing which is fantastic right and this is going into full-blown exponential mode so this thing within a week it should be much much higher we've gone from in the last five days or so we've gone from less than two percent all the way up to above four percent and we still don't know what has caused it we don't know what has caused it all right i think the who said the r naught is 99 percent certainly in the range of 3.0 but probably higher but probably higher okay here is the rate uh the death rate which is starting to and again this is the beginning stages of what we know the data coming in but it's around two percent so far right and most of the deaths have occurred in china so this is the data coming out of china that we're doing the death rate for right since the virus is spreading outside of china we'll have better idea of what the death rate is okay once more data becomes available hopefully not hopefully it just dies down it's over okay this graph here is the recovery the total number of people that have recovered which is fantastic it's looking like it's growing fast right it's gone from less than 200 to close to 1200 in a matter of one two one two three four five days so within five days the recovery the number of people that have recovered has gone off five 
times which is fantastic it is not perfect 1.3 for normal flu means people with the flu tend to infect yeah 1.3 people the cost seems to be currently wet market bush meat in china supposedly bats that's the current belief anyway could probably be well change in time will probably change in time i read i read something some doctors in southeast asia might have found a cure or a way to fight it or something yeah we're going to get a lot of either facts or noise coming out and hopefully they have right so the recovery rate is growing fast unfortunately the people are recovering right so the recovery rate is growing and the rate of and the number of people recovering is growing unfortunately <laughs> the death uh, the people dying is also increasing right I know this is data focus, but what's your take on experts saying the U.S. over uh, is overreacting to the outbreak? I don't think this is an overreaction. Okay, uh, I think when there's anything, any type of virus which is growing initially at an exponential rate with an R naught value that is infecting more people with a asymptomatic for twelve you know two weeks that china has initially by last week they had quarantined 60 million people it's cause to concern right cause for concern right we should be aware of what's going on and we should look at the data right do we have good estimates guesses for what it could have been caused by i hear it's bad meat in third world countries but you know how people say ridiculous yeah they say meat market bats snake initially was snakes and then bats um we don't know some theories are that it was uh, engineered some theories is a bioweapon some theories it was escape from la some people theories is drug we don't know we don't know i'm very excited to see people washing their hands more i hope it's a culture culture that can stick around yeah for sure the way that southeast asia doctors had found to treat it if i'm not mistaken was ironically h oh i heard about that too um i heard that's uh, neither here nor there com hiv combative drugs though these help but didn't guarantee recovery okay if it's true then great because the stuff is available right so what i wonder if the number of infected people increases linearly then the infection rate must be less than one that's why there's doubt in the numbers that's why there's doubt in the numbers uh, i could go for some fried bat right about now i couldn't i wouldn't want to touch yeah i heard the snake thing yeah so this is the number of dead and it's increasing right the this graph is the growth percent growth per day outside of china of uh, the number of number of infected right so number of infected the numbers are growing around 10 percent right now right outside of china which if it continues to grow at 10 percent it's not good it's it's still growing you want to cut that that back down right yeah i work i work many retail jobs movie theaters video game stores costco it's absolutely insane how many people do not wash their hands yeah and how many people wipe their hands on railings and just drag their hands on railings and different things it's weird to me personally sorry if i keep going off no no you're not legendary rob boss how are you doing did you hear a in real life twitch streamer got the coronavirus no no i didn't hear about that rob boss that's unfortunate but there is dangers of it right so rate of growth outside of china right percent percent growth per day is around 10 percent outside of china and right now it's stabilizing around 20 percent inside of china right or a little bit less than 20 percent so again it's still growing but it's not as we see one day here the rate percent per day 
going up to 120%, which would be a lot, right? Which would be unfortunate, right? And this is the total confirmed cases outside of China, right? Including Hong Kong. And it looks linear, which is a good thing. If it's linear, it will taper off sooner. If it's growing exponentially, every doubling period, uh, it's going to kick things up a lot more, right? So this thing growing linearly outside of China is a good sign if we're graphing it, right? And again, this is at the beginning stages, right? Because it started off in China. So China has about a month um, start to the infection spreading right so hopefully we don't see the rate kicking up outside of china and this is the graph for total confirmed cases inside of china and it's starting to go towards the linear not yet right so we're still exponential growth and we'll know more within a couple of weeks or within a week okay and what we'll end up doing okay is most likely doing another stream where we're going to do an update to this table okay and do more graphs so i just want to share that data with you guys just so you know where i'm coming from and you have a good visual of what's happening so no you know paranoia doesn't take over hysteria doesn't take over uh, people and also people don't dismiss what's happening right information is your friend data is your friend mathematics one of the best tools we have at our disposal to get a better appreciation for what's going on in the world okay and anything like this the data comes in fast so it's a really good opportunity to look at use our math abilities to look at data and start analyzing some of the stuff okay that's what i wanted to cover for this initial stage now what we're going to do on the live stream for those of you watching on this video on another platform once the live stream is over we're probably going to end the video now thanks for uh watching for those of you in the live stream we're going to share some links we're going to watch some videos we're going to read some articles possibly and have a little bit more discussion as to some of the theories possible things that are taking place okay so let me take this table down and let's bring up our uh, let me show you where i've gotten the data from right let me open up my display. Let's kick this down. 